Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. In today's episode, we're going to react to some of Dave Dombrowski's comments to the media in his first press conference of spring training from yesterday. He talked a lot about the Whit Merrifield signing and the overview of the Philadelphia Phillies offseason so far. Also, the Phillies made some interesting minor league deal signings. I want to break down two players that they signed over the weekend that we haven't really discussed yet. And there are 37 days until the Philadelphia Phillies opening day. Who's the best Philly to ever wear number 37? I'll give you a hint. It's a Hall of Famer. We'll discuss all of that on today's episode of Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas. Thank you so much for checking us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please uh, make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube. All that really helps me out here uh, on Locked On Phillies. So if you enjoy the content, that's the best way to say thank you. And if you subscribe to the YouTube, you get new notifications when episodes are posted. So I really appreciate everyone who's done that, everyone who's going to do that. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And to get the episode started today, we're going to have a conversation about Dave Dombrowski's meeting with the media. Now, why did he and Rob Thompson and Bryce Harper have a bunch of uh, audio cuts available from yesterday, things to hear uh, about them? Now. I don't have them on here, but uh, the reason why is because it was the first full practice of spring training. The full squad reported yesterday, February 19th. It was their first full squad workout. A lot of the guys had been down there already. You'd already seen some of the guys, Bryce and Stock, getting in work. Uh, Bryce Harper had been down there. But uh, you got to see the guys take BP yesterday. If you're following the Phillies on social media anywhere, they were posting a bunch of videos and stuff. Nick Castellanos is down there with his son, Liam. Like, everyone was back. And because it was the first day of spring training, the assembled media got a chance to talk to Dave Dombrowski and Rob Thompson and a couple of the players. Now, Dave Dombrowski had the most interesting things to say, because first of all, Whit Merrifield was a big signing and it just happened on Friday. So to have the opportunity to ask him about that is key for media members. So I want to run through a couple of the things that he was asked and what he had to say about it. So he talked about and this is what we've been bringing up all year long, right? Or all off season long, I should say. He talked about how Whit Merrifield ended up here. And he said that Whit Merrifield had been a guy that they've been interested in for some, uh, for some time, being that he was an all-star last year. He's a guy that plays multiple positions. He's a very versatile, talented veteran player, right-handed bat in the outfield that adds to your depth. But just like we expected, it sounds like he wasn't totally comfortable with the role that the Philadelphia Phillies were going to offer him as being a backup, most likely, in the outfield. And then time goes by, and he doesn't sign. Spring training starting, and he says, okay, whatever. I can go to Philly. I can be a contender. Um, I can play sometime, and then we'll get to a point where we can figure out playing time if I play well enough. But it was just Whit Merrifield coming to terms with the fact that he wasn't going to start here in Philadelphia, and he didn't have a lot of or enough interest in the market outside of the Phillies, I guess. So he said, okay, I'll come here, and I'll – play for the Phillies and I'll come off the bench for the time being and we'll figure that out. Now, when I say come off the bench for the time being, Whit Merrifield has already told Rob Thompson that he's going to earn more playing time, right? You'd think that'd be the other way around. The manager saying you've earned more playing time, but no, Whit Merrifield seems to be confident in his ability to earn more playing time over either Johan Rojas or Brandon Marsh. So make no mistake, there's a competition in center field. There's a competition in left field. There's a competition in general for the Philadelphia Phillies when it comes to where Whit Merrifield's going to play. He wants to start. He's comfortable with being a role player, but, well, I mean, he's accepting of it, it sounds like, from Dave Dabrowski's comments, but he's going to fight for a starting position, and he should want to. I mean, that's a competitor. I love that. So we'll see how that all plays out. Now, Dave Dabrowski was asked about Whit Merrifield's versatility as a defender, And it was a very interesting answer because he listed a lot of different positions. But the way he opened up answering that question was 
saying that, well, his most comfortable positions are second base and left field. Hmm. Let's think about who plays those positions for the Philadelphia Phillies. Your starting second baseman right now is Bryson Stott. Your starting left fielder right now is Brandon Marsh. What do we know about those players? They're both young players. They both have great hair. Okay, that part doesn't matter. Uh, but they're both young players. They're both left-handed hitters. They're both guys that in past years Rob Thompson has looked at and said, on days that lefties throw, we're going to put someone else out there. We're going to try and get someone else out there. Brandon Marsh has just flat out not been good against lefties. Talked to Jason Stark yesterday um, on 97.5 The Fanatic, and he was he brought it up. He's like, Brandon Marsh hasn't hit lefties well since the Pioneer League in uh, rookie ball. So it's not like he's proven all that much against lefties at the major league level. I think Brandon Marsh is a really good hitter. I think he needs to work on hitting lefties. And I think he needs reps for that. You need to see more of a sample size. But the same thing could be said for Bryson Stott, not to a lesser extent. Stott's the better overall hitter, but Rob Thompson didn't seem to trust him against lefties. I think Bryson Stott is good against lefties, but that's just my opinion. Unfortunately, I don't manage the team, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you ask. But my point is, it's interesting that those are the two positions that Dave Dombrowski listed first. The two young players that are left-handed hitters that Rob Thompson in the past has hit a righty for on days where lefty uh, lefties pitch. Okay, so I'm just connecting dots here. Maybe the competition isn't quite with Johan Rojas in center field. Now, if Rojas struggles in spring training, looks like he absolutely can't make the team, Whit Merrifield could be a starting outfielder on this team. He could be, and the Phillies would not miss a beat. It would be a different type of team. You wouldn't have the plus-plus defense and the plus-plus athleticism, but you'd be a better hitting team. It would be a fine trade-off if Rojas doesn't earn that spot. But here's how I would imagine, based on Dombrowski's comments, Whit Merrifield would do in the Philadelphia Phillies organization, like how he would settle into his role. It sounds like, that he's going to be in a position to every time they face a lefty play for either Brandon Marsh or Bryson Stott. And if either of those guys ever need a day off, he's going to play for them. In addition to that, if Castellanos needs a day off, he can play right. If Rojas needs a day off, he can play center. If Bohm needs a day off, he can play third. If Turner needs a day off, he can play short. Like he can play anywhere. So when you talk about a bench role, a lot of people think about what Christian Pache or Jake Cave did last year. Jake Cave did significantly more in playing, played first base, played left, played a good amount for the Philadelphia Phillies with the injuries they were facing. But he got to like nearly 60 games last year, Jake Cave did. I think Whit Merrifield's going to play like three times a week. And if you play three times a week, I mean, you're going to end up what close to 90 games. That's not bad for a guy who was told he wouldn't have a starting role. Maybe he'll earn one, but I think that's going to be the likely path is that not he's going to start over someone. It's that anybody who sits with Merrifield is going to be the first guy off the bench. Edmundo Soso will still have to get some work in at some points. He's a guy that's your utility infielder. So I'd expect on days that there are lefties and Stott and Marsh both need the day off, it would be Merrifield in the outfield. And Edmundo Sosa at second base in favor of Bryson Stott, or maybe they shift Trey Turner over there and they play Edmundo uh, Sosa at shortstop. Bottom line is, and this is a major upgrade over Jay Cave. I don't think Whit Merrifield is going to end up starting, at least to start the year for the Philadelphia Phillies, but it sounds like he's very focused on trying to win a starting position for himself. The other thing that I thought was very interesting was Rob Thompson, when he talked to the media, was asked about the lineup and where he sees Whit Merrifield potentially hitting on days he plays. And Topper talked about Whit Merrifield hitting for Schwarber all the way down to who's ever batting ninth. Like, And then there was a little back and forth with the reporter where they are like, oh, so Kyle Schwarber's your leadoff hitter. He's like, I don't know yet. And you're like, oh, you said he did. And just silly reporter back and forth stuff. But Kyle Schwarber's going to hit leadoff for the Phillies this year. I can almost guarantee you that. Bottom line is Whit Merrifield is a guy that Rob Thompson said could hit for anybody at any part of the lineup. And that just goes more to the point that I was just making. It's not, okay, well, you're going to hit Whit Merrifield like he's going to play second 
but he can't hit where Bryson Stott hits, or he's going to play short and he can't hit where Trey Turner hits. They feel comfortable with him up and down the lineup. They think they could slot him in anywhere. And you know what that does? That means that, like, let's say Bryce Harper needs a day off at first base and Whit Merrifield's going to go play over there. Normally what that would mean is someone shifts up into the three hole and you move Merrifield down because the power is a plus and it shifts up the entire lineup. Rob Thompson seems to think that Whit Merrifield can hit wherever. So eight of the nine guys in the lineup would be exactly the same. If one guy needs a day off, then Whit Merrifield just slots into their spot. And it becomes a lot less complicated with the moving parts. That's, you know what? I think I just stumbled upon it because I've never said that before about this signing until now. I think the biggest thing that Whit Merrifield brings to this team is he makes life significantly less complicated for the Philadelphia Phillies. They now have a catch-all, all-star level, defensive and offensive replacement that is just going to be on the bench available whenever they need it. And that is invaluable in the majors. Injuries are going to happen. Players are going to go down. You're going to need to give guys off days. This is how you make the most of a roster spot by having a guy like Whit Merrifield and the Philadelphia Phillies did that. So that's some of the stuff that Dave Dombrowski and Rob Thompson had to say. Bryce Harper's comments, I know I brought up that he talked to the media more about his contract situation. and Eventually, we're going to have to do a show talking about the Bryce Harper extension talks. I, don't, I think it's a non-story right now. And uh, I can tell you more about that in a later episode. But some interesting stuff on Whit Merrifield and the Philadelphia Phillies in general and uh, what they're really looking at when it comes to spring training and who's got a spot to earn. So now if you're looking at it, right, just to give you an idea, and I'm going to later on in the week do a uh, version 3.0 of my opening day roster prediction because clearly it's changed with the Whit Merrifield signing, and there might be another guy we talk about here coming up that could make that change as well. But – uh, when you look at the position players, you're going to have 13, right? So two catchers, Stubbs and Realmuto. Uh, and then you're going to go, what, five infielders with Harper, Turner, Stott, Bohm, Sosa. So you're up to seven, right? So you need six more. So that would mean that you've got, what, six outfielders. There's three starters. Let's just call it Marsh, Rojas, and um, – I'm an idiot. Marsh, Rojas, and Castellanos. Uh, and then you've got Schwarber as the DH. So that leaves you two spots, right? And Schwarber technically an outfielder. Leaves you two spots for the outfield, and Whit Merrifield just took one of those. So now that combination of Jake Cave and Christian Pache, there's only room for one of those guys on the opening day roster. Like only one of those dudes are going to make the team. Or could it be someone else entirely? Could both Jake Cave and Christian Pache not make the opening day roster this year? Uh, it would only be because someone went out and took the jobs from them because those are guys that the organization does like. They've upgraded on with Whit Merrifield. But uh, let me tell you about coming up some interesting minor league signings. So these guys are minor league signings over the weekend with invites to camp. I want to tell you a little bit about who they are and why you should be excited about them coming up as we continue Locked on Phillies. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. They got superchargers. They got roof racks. They got exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, maybe you're into all three, eBay Motors has got you covered. You got over 122 million parts for your vehicle. You're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. I mean, come on. They've got everything you could imagine. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. You don't want to be burning cash. You want to save. And eBay Motors helps you do that. So with all the parts you need at the price you want, come on. It's a no-brainer. It's super easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your vehicle alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. So a couple of interesting signings by the Philadelphia Phillies over the weekend. The Whit Merrifield thing stole the headlines, but there were a couple of guys that the Phillies signed to minor league contracts that are very interesting. The first one, David Dahl. Now, this is a guy that has spent time with Colorado, and I know how it works. When you look at the Rockies, you're like, okay, well, 
We don't really know too much about them. You don't really know too much about their players unless they have like an Arenado who just um, goes ahead and pops off the screen at you and becomes a great player. Trevor Story when he was making the noise. Like the Rockies have not been good for what feels like ever. So we don't really keep track of the players on that team very often. But let me tell you a little bit about David Dahl, okay? He's a guy that's a former All-Star and a former first-round pick. It was years ago that he was an All-Star. He's 29 years old, and he debuted in 2016, right? He made the All-Star team in 2019. So now that's five years ago he was an All-Star. Then he's had injuries since then. He's had a whole bunch of stuff, rib, back, shoulder, everything you can imagine. Like the guy sounds like the operation game guy. Just got everything wrong with him. But what the Phillies got the opportunity to do is sign him to a minor league deal. He doesn't have any options left, but he's been bouncing around and the Rangers tried him out. Brewers, Nationals, Padres, Dodgers, and signed free agent deals with all those teams. Why are the Phillies interested in Dahl? Well, Again, you're bringing in a guy that has been an all-star in the past. That means he has talent. He's the former first-round pick by the Rockies. That means he has talent, or at least he had talent. If he doesn't work out, what happens? He plays in Triple A, and okay, cool. I don't, I don't know. What? No harm, no foul. Let's say he does work out. Let's say the Phillies do get a little something out of him, a la Jason Worth. You remember when Jason Worth came here? He was one of these type of guys that's just never been able to figure it out, but immensely talented, comes here as a huge part of a World Series winning team, right? So, like, it, you, you're you not expecting that to happen, but when you see a former all-star available and he's willing to take a minor league deal, you could add him in a position of need because he plays outfield. Uh, like, that puts you in position to potentially hit a gold mine, and if you don't, uh, you, you didn't commit too much money to trying to see what you would find out. So I like the doll signing. In fact, I see that. I say, okay, well, you got two guys in Pache and Cave that have not really shown too much here. I think Pache and Cave would have the inside track to that last outfield position over Dahl, but he's an all-star. The other two guys have not been all-stars before. Uh, now he was an all-star five years ago, but still, the point stands. The guy's got major league experience. Could he find a way to the final roster spot? I don't think that's completely out of the question. I think it's unlikely, but I think he's a name to watch in spring training to see. You remember how Weston Wilson just like went off in spring training last year? Like, Who in the world is this guy? Speaking of which, Weston Wilson, maybe he's got a shot to make the uh, make the team as an outfielder or maybe a utility guy or something like that. But uh, my point is there's always kind of that guy of like where'd he come from in spring training? there's a really good chance that Dahl could be that guy in 2024. So look out for David Dahl, 29 years old, former All-Star from the Rockies, Philly signed him to a minor league deal. And another guy that's super interesting. Now I know a little bit about Dahl because he's played in the majors, but this next guy is just like, this would be a, a Disney movie if he made the team. So the Phillies have also signed a pitcher to a minor league deal. Ricardo Pinto, great name. Love that name, Ricardo Pinto, who everyone was going nuts on social media because he was the MVP of the Caribbean Series down in Miami earlier this year. Um, he pitched in the Caribbean Series. He pitched in the Venezuela Finals. Uh, he, Yeah, he's got good numbers in those. Now, those are just single series. So he was 2-0 with a .83 ERA in the Caribbean Series. And he was 2-0 with a zero ERA in the Venezuela Finals. 10.2 innings pitched and 14 innings pitched in those series, respectively. A lot of strikeouts. Um, I mean, obviously a talented pitcher at that level. Now, the majors are a different level. I don't know if he's going to make it to the major league roster at any point. He's 30 years old. He's a right-hander, obviously out of Venezuela. Uh, the Phillies actually originally signed him in 2011 when he was 17, and he pitched in the minor league system from 2012 to 2017, but never really figured it out. Uh, but then what he did with Venezuela earlier this month, it, it put him in a situation where the Phillies were interested. And they say, hey, come on back. We're going to give you a shot. He's a very, very long shot to make the team. But the numbers look really good. And I don't know where he ends up sliding in. He may be in the minors. He may be just outright like waived or whatever. But that's another arm that he'll be an interesting watch when he gets his opportunities in spring training, right? He'll be a very interesting guy to say, okay, 
this is when he steps on the mound, a guy that maybe you want to root for. I mean, it's a great story uh, to see him come back. We know what's going on with David Buchanan, who pitched for the Phillies like back in 2015, is now back trying to earn a spot on the team. Also unlikely that he does, but uh, I like these comeback stories, and Pinto seems to be one of them. So keep an eye on those names. David Dahl much more so than Pinto, but to potentially make noise in spring training. Coming up as we wrap up today's show, we're going to continue our opening day countdown. Number 37 on the countdown. Who's the best Philly to ever wear number 37? I gave you the hint in the open. It's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, we'll get into it as we wrap up Locked on Phillies. First, let me tell you about FanDuel, though, because you can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams. So they've got these things called quick bets. They're just set up for you. You see something you like, you just tap it. You don't have to figure out all the odds or anything yourself. Live game, same game parlays. Normally, you could do same-game parlays before, but live same-game parlays, even better chance for big winnings. Exclusive props are only on FanDuel, and they got so much more, like money line, spread, over-under, futures. They got everything you could use at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, the opening day countdown has reached number 37. We have 37 days to the Phillies take on the Braves on March 28th for the opening game of both teams 2024 seasons. So very excited about that. And we've been counting down the best player to wear each uniform number in our countdown. So now we're on to number 37. Believe it or not, we've already mentioned a number 37 in this episode. Weston Wilson wore 37 last year when he debuted for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, some other notable names. Antonio Bastardo wore 37. Chad Durbin wore 37. I mean, thank goodness we don't have to worry about him anymore. Odubel Herrera wore 37. Um, you've got a lot of guys on this list. Ruben Amaro wore 37 for the Philadelphia Phillies back in 96, 97. And there were a lot of players that wore the number 37. In fact, there were so many that in 1984, three guys wore the number. <laughs> you might be like, how's that possible? I've seen two guys wear numbers because one guy gets called up, one guy gets sent down, another guy gets called up. They just happen to wear the same number. But in 1984, John Russell, Randy Martin, and Jim Kern all wore the number 37 for the Philadelphia Phillies. So I thought that was a funny little, um, funny little nuance when it comes to this number in the countdown. But the guy who's got to get it, he wore the number for one year in 1981. Ryan Sandberg wore number 37 for the Philadelphia Phillies. Now, I know Ryan Sandberg didn't make his bones as a member of the Phillies and goes to Chicago. Like, I know the story. Comes back as a manager, didn't really do too much as a manager for the Phillies, but he's a Hall of Fame player, right? You're like, Ryan Sandberg is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. He has to be the best number 37. And while there are a lot of 37s, there was no one, like, stand out with the Philadelphia Phillies that wore it. So, uh, Ryan Sandberg... Number 37 in the countdown, a Hall of Famer. Wish it would have been here in Philadelphia, but still got to give credit where credit's due. Best number 37 in the history of the Philadelphia Phillies is right there. So tomorrow we'll do 36, and we've got plenty of stuff to get into on tomorrow's episode. As spring training has begun in earnest, we've got our first game against the Blue Jays Saturday, the Philadelphia Phillies do. So we're only a couple days away from spring training game action. You know what I think I'll do tomorrow? I'm going to look up a schedule of what games are on TV and what games are on the radio and how you can keep track of that for spring training because I don't know off the top of my head and I know I want to watch and listen to as much Phillies baseball as I can. So that's what we'll do in tomorrow's episode in addition with our countdown and a couple other good things I have planned for you. So that's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Thank you so much for checking us out. Again, please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube. All that really helps me out here on Locked on Phillies. So if you enjoy the content, I'd appreciate you doing that. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I'll talk to you tomorrow on the next episode of Locked On Phillies.